Welcome to yoga. Today, we're going to be doing some heart openers, otherwise known as back bends. So find your place for centering, a uh, comfortable seat or supine, your choice. Uh, and have, oh, have ready um, a block and either a rolled blanket or uh, something that um, will support across your back for the end of practice and find your comfortable place. You might be able to see in the background the sun is maybe coming out today. It's rained every single day for almost three weeks. <sighs> okay, so close your eyes and begin to bring your awareness inside. So closing your eyes helps, helps that process. Take note of where you are, where, who you are, how your body is right here, right now. So just do a mindful body scan, starting at the crown of your head, relaxing as you go. So start up with your scalp, just relax, let it melt down, relax your, around your eyes your jaw, let your teeth come apart a little bit. Relax the muscles in your throat. If you're seated, let your shoulders just gently come down from your ears. If you're lying down, let your body sink into the mat. Continue making sure that you briefly rest, mindfully rest on each joint, each muscle the muscles between the tendons and notice, notice what's going on. So as you're noticing, no judgment, but knowing where you are when you start your practice will help you modify as needed, make decisions about how to move through your practice based on what your body's telling you. Body is your first teacher. It won't lead you astray. Your mind will, could, your body won't. And now bring your awareness to your breath. And we're going to do a pranayama today of, well, before I say what it is, just go ahead and watch your breath. Just watch your breath without changing it. Just notice if there's a difference between the length of the inhale and exhale, or if, if your breath seems rapid or uneven, shallow, deep, there's no right or wrong, just notice where you are as you start. Keeping your face relaxed. And now we will begin pranayama. We're gonna do a four, two, four, two breath. So sometimes called a box breath. Um, so begin as your next inhale comes and inhale fully to a count of four. Then pause, complete stillness for a count of two. Then exhale slowly to a count of four. Pause at the end of the exhale for a count of two. So you, you determine your count, but the inhale and exhale will be even, and there will be a two count of two pause between inhale and exhale.
Now, if you'd like, you can increase your ratio to a count of six. It just means slowing down the inhale and exhale and the pause between count of three. If this doesn't feel right, go back to four, two, four, two. So just, if you can maintain without struggle, that's the place to be. If you increase your count, it doesn't mean you're taking in more air, it means you're slowing down your inhale and exhale. the end of your next exhale and pause let go of your pranayama so just come back to your natural breath but do keep a slow deep even breath during practice ujjayi if you practice ujjayi and you're comfortable with it that's just a narrowing of the goddess so that you that make your breathing makes a soft sound inside your head and it's just a nice way to maintain focus on your breath and to um, keep, keep your control over it a little bit. But slow, deep, even breath during practice. And just a note about the kumbhaka, the, the pause between inhale and exhale that we just did. One of the definitions of yoga that comes from the ancient scriptures is, or ancient writings is, um, yoga is the stilling of the fluctuations of the mind. So when your body is still and everything is still as you can get it, that helps to still the mind, the chatter that's going on in your mind. Okay, now just take a moment to create an intention for your practice. So a positive affirmation that you'd like to take away from your practice today or dedicate to someone or something else. And we're going to begin practice on our back. So remove the props from your mat, if you have them, and come on over onto your back, supine. And stretch your legs out, stretch your arms overhead. Broaden, spread and broaden your toes, lift and spread them, spread your finger bases. And on an inhale, lengthen out in two directions. Exhale, soften, keep your arms and legs in place. One more time, lengthen in two directions. And as you exhale, bring your knees into your chest, hug them in, take any movement here that feels good, rock around. You might want to take a happy baby, hold on to your feet, your toes, your ankles, and press up against your hands. Open your hips a little bit. And then knees bent, feet to the mat, about hip width apart. Bend your elbows so your fingertips go toward the ceiling, palms face each other. Just lift up a little bit and bring your shoulder blades together on the back. So this will be our first heart opener, back bend pose. We're going to do a um, bridge moving bridge, Ulola, and so make sure you start out as always by spreading your toes, set them back down, put a little more um, 
pressure down through your big toe and the inner feet. That'll help your you keep your knees from splaying apart. And then press into your feet and your forearm, your upper arms. And on an inhale, lift your hips up. You don't have to lift them all the way the first time. Exhale, roll down one vertebra at a time. So gentle flexion, then inhale. So keep moving with your bridge, lifting and opening your heart on the inhale. So think of moving your chest toward your chin. Keep your neck long. Don't, don't um, bend your chin toward your chest. Maybe get a little higher each time. Move with your breath. So inhale, lift and open. Exhale, release. Now you have an option here. You can keep moving in your bridge or you can hold. And if you if you'd like to hold, it can feel good to clasp your fingers under your, your hands under your hips. Give a little more leverage there. Maintain a slow, deep, even breath, so no struggle. If effort turns to struggle, just come back and hug your knees into your chest. into an all four posture tabletop. And position your wrists under your shoulders, knees under your hips. So let's spread your fingers, press down into the mat, especially through the ball mounts of your fingers. And press the tops of your feet into the mat. Start with a neutral spine, so just lengthen out through the crown of your head, through your tailbone. And then on an exhale, pull your belly in, chin to chest, tuck your tailbone, cat pose. When the exhale comes, inhale, excuse me, when the inhale comes, let your chest and belly come down through your arms, keep your arms straight. And when the in exhale comes, round into cat. So just move with your breath, slow movements, mindful through spinal flexion and extension. Just waking up the spine. Stay with the whole movement. Stay with your breath. Exhale, let your hips come back to your heels in child's pose. Keep your arms out in front. So an extended child's pose, arms are out in front. Take a few breaths here, relaxing everything you can, just letting go down into the mat. We're gonna do a little Ulola here. So as you inhale, Rise up, let your arms come up, palms touch overhead like a sun breath. As you exhale, palms come down and back, perhaps behind your back into child's pose. A few more times. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, down. Take your gaze can go up toward your hands if that's okay with your neck. So modify as always to make the pose feel good for you. And the next time you come down into child's pose, pause. Stretch your hands out in front. 
Raise your hips a little bit and walk your hands out in front and keeping your hips up. Let your chest come down. Puppy pose. So this is a, your chest. Notice how open your chest is in the front. So that upper body down dog move a position. And then walk your hands back up. Come to kneeling. So your foundation is the tops of your shin on your shins and the tops of your feet. Take your hands to start back behind so your thumbs are facing out the palms of your hands are on the back of your sacrum bring your elbows toward each other lift your heart so lengthen the whole front of your body here take your gaze up if you want to or not it's just a beginning of a, a one variation of camel Ustrasen. Other options are to clasp your hands behind your back and give some leverage there, a little more opening. Or if you want to go into the more common camel. Oh, I've got a cramp in the back of my leg. You can bring your hands around to your heels. So hands to your heels, hands to your heels, and lift that way, making sure you're tucking your tailbone, pressing your hips forward. So find the camel that feels good for you today. There's lots of different levels. And the one that's right is the one that feels good to you. So breathe right into the front heart here. So deep, even breaths. And then bring your hands to the mat, walk them out in front and lower down either by coming to plank and lowering as slowly as you can, keeping your elbows next to your body or Keep your hips up and lower down your chest, your chin, and the hips come last. So either way, come to your front body, prone position, and just rest with your forehead on your stacked hands for a few breaths. Just notice the energy maybe moving around in your body. Notice how that feels. Then come up to your forearms. So elbows under shoulders. Spread your fingers. Press down again a little more through the bases of the fingers on your the top of your palm. And bring your chest up and forward through your arms. Tuck your tailbone here. You don't want to overarch in the lower spine. So press your hip bones into the mat. Tuck your tailbone a little bit. Inwardly rotate your thighs. So the big toes might be a little closer together. Heels coming out. So the, the extension here is meant to be in the thoracic spine between your shoulder blades, the upper rib cage. Breathe right into that open front chest. Your gaze is down to the mat, so don't bring the cervical spine into it. Just look a little, about a foot in front of you on the mat. Breathe slow, deep and even. Now bring your um, forehead 
to your hands again. Bend your right leg and reach around with your right hand. Take a hold either from the outside of your foot or the inside if you can do that. And just bring the foot toward the uh, back of your thigh. So the stretch here is in the quadricep muscle of your right leg. Find a really a stretch that feels really good. If you want to go a little further, you can lift that thigh up. Just breathe for a few breaths here in whatever configuration. You can use a strap around the um, ankle if you're it's not comfortable to reach back. As you're breathing here, send the inhale right into the place where you feel the stretch. And the exhale, see what release you can find there. Let the right leg go and switch to the other side. So I'm letting my forehead rest on my right hand now, using my left hand to draw the left foot back. Back to your breath. Nice, slow, deep, even breath. Ujjayi if you like. Inhale into the stretch. Exhale. See if you can release it. So our quadricep muscles can get very tight if we do a lot of sitting. Hips and knees are flexed in that position. Here we're getting some lengthening here. Okay, then bring both legs up. We're gonna work on Danyarasan or bow pose. So forehead on the mat, if you can, reach back and take hold of both feet. You can stay right here, or on an inhale, you can lift your legs and your upper body, you can come in and out, or you can hold, so inhale right into that open chest you could even rock a little bit with your breath so inhale up a little bit pulse exhale maybe down a little bit and then let the legs come down turn to one side or the other rest on your cheek let your legs go out straight Rest on the tops of your hands, arms by your side. This is rest and recovery, so just feel the energy. Let everything drain into the mat. Now carefully lift your head, move to the other cheek and take a few breaths on the other side.
now bring your hands under your shoulders and come up into downward facing dog. Take any movement, first down dog. Pedal your feet a little bit. Lengthen anything that needs lengthening. Stretch out your leg, bend your knee, look under your arm. Just take any movement here that your body's asking for, that feels good. And then walk your hands back to your feet or your feet up to your hands. Come into standing forward bend, Uttanasana. Knees bent a little or a lot. Again, this is what your body wants, needs, any arms, so you could hold on to opposite elbows, have your fingers under the fronts of your feet, anything, but just hang, nice release for your low back, just let the weight of your upper body and gravity lengthen out your spine. And now, best way for you, come all the way up to standing. And we will come to mountain pose. So, look down at your feet, make sure they're, they can be touching or a little bit apart. Lift and spread your toes, lay them down. Press down through the four corners of your feet. So consciously, if you can close your eyes while you're doing this, you can get a better mind-body connection for the alignment. So press down through the bottoms of the feet, the four corners. Notice, now just relax that for a minute. Stop pressing. Now press and notice what happens. The joints line up in your legs, your kneecaps come up slight activation of your quadriceps. Take a little tuck in your tailbone, bring the hip points up. Now lift your lower rib cage away from your pelvis. So long side waist. Let's externally rotate the arms a little bit. Notice how that opens the chest. Spread your fingers, reach down, shoulders down from the ears. Lift up through the crown of your head. Everything's all in alignment here. Now let go of 10% of your effort. What's 10%? I don't know. Let go of a little effort without losing your alignment. So we're always going for Shira Sukham. Stable but easy like a mountain. Mountain isn't exerting effort, it's just grounded. You're grounded in your mountain by pressing down into the earth, but it also rises up. You're grounding down and lifting up through the crown of your head. Bring your awareness to the front body and just Bring your shoulder blades a little more together, opening your chest a little more. Okay, then open your eyes and we're gonna do a shoulder, I call it the shoulder vinyasa. So spread your fingers, inhale, arms up overhead, reaching up, palms touch, and then right down the center to your heart space. Then make a triangle with your thumbs and index fingers and push away, inhale. Exhale, pull back, turn your hands over and we'll do that again, inhale up. Gaze can move with your hands or stay neutral. Two full, deep, even breaths for each set. 
couple more times. Your breath is slow, deep, even. Your movements are initiated by the breath. Last time. Okay, then let your arms come down and we're going to move to a balanced pose, which is going to have some levels. So going back to bow pose, what we did with the leg, I'll just demonstrate first. We're going to take hold of the one leg opposite arm raises up and if this is dancer basically you can stay right here or you can move forward as you stretch out in two directions um, if you can have it do it against a wall or um, put your foot on a chair so or if if holding on to the leg isn't a great thing for you you can just bring the leg back and hold it up so find the version of dancer that works for you today but do start by pressing down into your left foot finding a gaze point something that's not moving soft gaze firm up your core so those are the three elements so and then keep breathing Couple more breaths. If you come out, just take a breath and build back up mindfully and slowly. It's practice. No sweat. And then come out. Shake out the leg that you've been standing on. Shake anything out. We'll go to the other side. So this time, let come up on your left toes. Let the weight go into your right foot. And take hold of your left. Once you've got a hold, bring to make sure the leg is the hip is as straight as you can get it there you're not leaning over one way or the other you don't have to raise the arm you don't have to do anything so find some balanced version asymmetrical Okay, then come out of that, shake out your legs again. Come back to mountain pose. So mindfully from the foundation up, come into mountain. Just reconnect with your breath. Scan your body, see how everything's feeling. Come to the front third of your mat and stand with your feet hip width apart or shoulder width apart. Turn your pivot on your right heel to turn your right toes out to the front corner of your mat and take a big step back. So make sure your feet are not, they're separated, like the railroad tracks, they're not on one line. Bend your left knee so it comes right over your left ankle. You can adjust your stance to get where you want to be. Square your hips to the front edge of the mat. So you might want to put your hands on your hips. The right hip is going to want to go back. Bring it forward. So right hip comes forward. Left hip may be back a little bit. We're going to do a version of Warrior One. Um, I'm going to call it open-hearted warrior, but I might have just made that up. So um, some arm options are goalpost arms. So notice how that's really an extra opening for the 
front of your chest, a little more of a back bend, or take your hands clasped behind your back, even more of a heart opener. So just find what's comfortable for you. Breathe right into your heart, right in the front, really opening, opening in the front of the body. You might also notice the shoulder blades coming narrow together on the back, allowing the opening of the front body. So breathe here. Stable breath, inhale, lift, open, exhale, maybe sink a little deeper down. Again, you're going for the stable and easy, so you feel very stable, but not over-efforting. Okay, then let go of your hands, bring your foot forward. Take a couple of half suns just to bring some movement after stillness. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale through chair. Exhale all the way up and do one more of those, leading with your own breath. Then come back to, we'll do the other side. So take your left leg foot back. It's a little externally rotated. And right knee over right ankle. Left hip comes forward. Press down into both feet. So when you press down into the back foot, that helps bring the, that hip forward. And then Take any arm posture you want on an inhale. So I'm gonna do it different than I did last time. So any open-hearted arm position. Gaze can go up if that feels good for you. If not, just straight ahead. Come to your breath. Notice how the inhale lifts and opens your rib cage. And that inhale is bringing prana energy all through your body. Equally important is the exhale, getting rid of all that you don't need. Okay, then let your hands come back together. Come back to mountain pose. Let go here. Uh, inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, fingers spread, reach up, exhale, swan dive forward, come into a forward fold. Or if you prefer, you can come to a downward facing dog. So we're just gonna rest here. This either pose is compensation for what we've been doing. Either pose is rest, restore. Just a few breaths. to the side and come around to a seat. Now it's time to get your block and uh, roll, a rolled up blanket or a, a pillow, something you can put under your upper back. We're going to do a supported fish. So I will demonstrate. So just watch me before you get set up. We're going to 
put whatever support roll blanket mat whatever under your under your shoulder blades and then if it's big and fat like mine is you're going to probably want a block to put your head on so something to put your head on and then just let your arms come out any way it feels good so it's this is a restorative posture we're going to hold it for a couple minutes so just find that place where you can keep that nice open chest heart opener but without effort so the there's a chakra the heart chakra which is called anahata it's the um, center for emotions this is in the subtle body of yoga that which you can't see so it's where you can develop and uh, connect to your compassion for yourself and for others As you rest here, keep your focus on that chakra, on their heart center, heart space. And just visualize the breath moving there. Visualize your heart opening. Having space for Limitless love, limitless compassion. A few more seconds here. And then just remove your props, block, the, whatever you've been using. Stay on your back. Bend your knees, feet near your hips. Arms out to the side, shoulder height. And begin windshield wipe. So your choice, whether you want your feet very close together or wider apart it makes a difference in what works during your windshield wipe so your choice but do inhale in the center and exhale pull your belly in and bring your knees to one side you're moving with your breath still so slow movements just releasing your hips, your low back. Your gaze can be neutral or move with the knees or to the opposite side. The best choice is what feels good to you. And if 
if you'd like to hold the twist, just pick a side and pause there. You can keep moving if that's better for you. If you're holding, use your breath to get more out of the pose. So as you inhale, inhale into the sensation of twist or, or stretch or area of greatest sensation. Just send the breath right there. And as you exhale, consciously release. Notice where you can feel a little release. It might not be in the area of sensation. It might be in a different place. But please stay in your body with sensation. If your mind starts to wander, you can always come back to your breath, to your intention, to your sensation. Now, if you've held on a side, inhale back to center. Take one breath in the center just to realign. And then next time you come to an exhale go to the other side you might need to change your leg spacing or your alignment of your knees anything because your sides are different so find what feels really great on this side center take one or two minutes we've got some time here so take one or two minutes to take any movement or posture that you want before we settle into shavasana so we've done a lot of back bending you might want to do some forward bending or you might want to do core or more movement or something restorative so a restorative bridge, if you want to put a block under your sacrum and just relax in a restorative bridge to, to kind of go with what we started, the first back bend was bridge, that would be great. Anything, anything that your body's calling for. A couple minutes, and then I'll tell you when it's time to start um, moving into Shavasana.
Okay, then take, you can take more time if you want, but begin to move toward your final posture, Shavasana. And there are lots of ways to do Shavasana. You could try your legs up the wall or feet on the chair uh, or bottom lower legs. Just be symmetrical and cozy. Make sure you're comfortable. Not too hot, not too cool. And expending as little energy as possible. So the so things can help weight on your belly can help. So my granddaughter is practicing with me today. She's behind me and she had a 35, what was it? 10 pound, 10 pound, yeah. 10 pound weight on her abdomen when we started practice the the bags that i use in class um have i think eight or eight pounds she's got a very strong core uh anyway so weight is actually a, a um signal to your body to relax so eye bags um are, are nice covering with a blanket is nice so maybe try something new. And settle back, close your eyes. If that's comfortable, you don't have to. If, if you're not comfortable closing your eyes, you can just have a very soft gaze. Maybe eyes half closed. And then surrender. Just feel supported by the earth. You're safe. Your body is breathing itself. You have everything you need right here in this moment. Gently bring your awareness back to your space, the space. Waking your body with small movements, wiggling your fingers, your toes, stretching out in any way that feels good. And then bring both knees into your chest and come over onto your favorite side. Just rest your head on your arms Come back to where we started with a just awareness of 
how your body feels, where your emotions are, the state of your mind. Just noticing how you've changed since practice began. And then bring yourself up to a comfortable seat and rest your hands, palms up on your thighs, connecting your thumb and index finger. This is a mudra of receiving. We're going to end practice today with a meditation, a loving, it's a meta meditation called loving kindness which goes right hand in hand with the heart openers we've been doing, focusing on the Anahata Chakra, where compassion can grow and blossom. So close your eyes, sit with a nice tall spine reaching up, feel grounded down through your sit bones into the earth. Relax your face. So the loving kindness meditation starts with a wish, positive wish for yourself. And then you send that same wish to others. So we're gonna, just gonna do a very basic one. And when you do this on your own, which I hope you do, you can modify it to include any anything you want. So we'll start with ourselves and I will, again, this is very basic, I will say the prompt and you repeat it in your head. So. <clears throat> May I be well. May I be happy. May I be at peace. May my friends and family be well. May my friends and family be happy. May my friends and family be at peace. May others be well. May others be happy. May others be at peace. May all beings everywhere be well. May all beings everywhere be happy. May all beings everywhere be at peace. Namaste. So those are the, the the, I, I inserted friends and family. That's the way I do it. Other options are, there are any options, but just as long as you start with yourself and broaden out and it's, it's something positive that you wish not only for yourself, but for everyone. So if you're having uh, in this time of division um, problems, getting along with, with people or clashing over ideas, loving kindness meditation is a good way to include them in your good wishes too and that increases your compassion so thanks for coming to yoga and i will see you back here next week bye